I was always a conservationist from a little kid. I, I'd be the guy, you know, the other kids are catching turtles from the, the fish pond and I'm the guy behind catching turtle and releasing it. So I was a sort of troubled kid that was always, yeah, always on the, the animal side. I think in my early 20s, I was traveling um, around Asia and, you know, I was going to go to Parks and Wildlife Service, which is like uh, the ranges of the national parks in Australia. And I realized, you know, I'd finish high school, go and do my diploma in Parks and Wildlife, and then I'd be 20 years old, 21 years old, stuck in the middle of the Australian outback. I thought, no, I'm too curious. No, I want to see the world. No, I want to see all this other wildlife. I didn't want to do that. So I, so as I, I spent a few years traveling, and I always had a camera, so I was just taking photographs. But it was always just a hobby, and I didn't really think it's going to turn into anything. And then managed to land a job in Hong Kong as a photo assistant, and then it just took off. But I never, ever imagined that would be the way my career would take off. Well, I suppose when I was very young, my mother, when I remember when I was about five years old, her writing to the Australian government, protesting about the, the killing of whales. And I think in like yeah, 79 or something, the Australian government announced that they would uh, ban commercial whaling. And that sort of, to me, showed me that how my mum had made a step towards, you know, trying to do the right thing. And her voice had been heard and the results followed, obviously not just from thousands of people across Australia, but it just goes to sh it's almost, it was a, a protest that's saying that if you speak up for something that you care about, change can happen. I suppose one image particularly, and I don't think it's a great image, but when I got in the water with a blue whale and this blue whale swam towards me, it was like, I was just blown away that I was lucky enough and privileged enough to get in the water on my own with a blue whale. And it was just me, my camera, and this blue whale. So on a personal, personal level, just getting to experience these different moments with different species, to me, is, blows me away. So I've always got my personal issues on that I create, I, and I try and, like for example, shark fin, I started that, nobody wanted to fund it, there was no money, I did a lot of it off my own back. And then as the issue became more in the limelight, then people wanted to get involved, then money came, people wanted to fund assignments, and it kept on going. Uh, same with the palm oil. I started that three, four years ago. There was no money on the table. Now I have a contract with Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation to go and do that because they, they realize the importance of my work and they realize that it's needed and those images are used for campaigns. So I, like I said, I have my own personal projects I work on and then eventually people get interested because I know they will. They just don't know it yet. <laughs> well, just have faith and realize it's important and they will, you know, when I start the manta rays, people go, oh, people aren't going to be interested in manta rays. And, and then they come to me with projects. Uh, Wild Aid uh, came to me with pangolins, actually, and asked me to follow the pangolin trade. Two best things people can do is look at their diet, think about what they're eating, maybe cut down on meat. It's the biggest single thing anyone can do, for, you know, for greenhouse gases, for climate change, is look at your diet and then be a conscious consumer and, and look at labels, think about palm oil, think about, you know, shark fin, just, Every time you sit down at a meal, think about how that food got to your plate and is it, has it affected anything and is it morally correct to be eating this and, and just try to think a little bit more about the world we live in because ultimately it will affect all of us.